Hello DeLorean Nation and welcome to the masterclass for learning how to use the DeLorean. In today's video, I'm going to explain the ins and outs, the basics of how to utilize the DeLorean to get you a head start in actually profiting in the market. Today we're going to talk about the four step process, what to do to know when to enter a trade, where to enter a trade, stop loss and take profit levels, and so much more. And I'm super excited to show it all to you today. So first things first guys, my name is Patrick Kenny. Our agenda today is to learn the full strategy breakdown in under 60 minutes. So the first thing I want to tell you guys is not to overcomplicate this. I think every single time I do this training, the number one worry that I get is people say, Patrick, it can't be that easy. And I'm here to tell you, yes, it is that simple. But you need to know these concepts like the back of your hand. You have to understand these concepts like no other or you will not succeed. So today I want you to buckle down, learn these four steps, and we're going to talk about exactly how to utilize the DeLorean software. So the first thing I want to talk about is how many of you guys have traded before? In the comments section, I want you to comment, how many of you guys have traded before? And also, how many of you guys have never traded before? Because what I want to tell you is this. If you have never traded before, you, not the others, but you alone are really the reason I'm here. Of course, I'm here for people that have traded before, but if you have never traded before, I am really, really excited to talk to you because this is enabling you to get in the market faster than ever. And this is what we talk about when we talk about the DeLorean. So what is the DeLorean? What is this scanner that you've been hearing about? Well, first things first, it is a multi time frame scanner. It scans the 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, four hour, and daily time frames simultaneously, ensuring you do not miss a profitable opportunity in the market. It scans 30 different currency pairs, which means across those five time frames and 30 currency pairs, it is scanning for 150 unique opportunities every single second. Finally, we've had this algorithm for approximately four years, and it's very adaptive keeping you out of key market situations and keeping you out of dangerous market situations and keeping you in the market when you need to be in the market. And that is why the adaptive algorithm is so powerful because on dangerous days to trade, we keep you in the market. Finally, it comes with an easy visualization. We'll talk a lot about this today. But what I mean by this is that it is very easy to see when and where the DeLorean wants you to buy or sell in the market. So first things first, what does the DeLorean look like? Well, you can notice right here, this is the DeLorean scanner. On the right side, we have the alert panel. Okay? These are your pairs on the right side. This is showing you exactly what you should be buying or what you should be selling. And on the left side is your currency pair. And as you notice, you do have some pretty lines, and those lines are already set up for you. This is a template that is set up directly for you, and everything in here is clickable, meaning when you want to click an alert here, you can click it, it'll open up and populate on the chart. If you want to click an alert here, you can click it, it'll open up and populate on the chart, so on and so forth. Finally, it does also have these simple blue and red arrows. We'll talk a lot about those today. And last but not least, it is a web-based software, meaning that this can be used literally from a cell phone, a Tesla, a laptop, a computer, a desktop. It doesn't matter. Anything that you can access Google on, you can access DeLorean on. And that is amazing for those that are on the go and unable to reach a desktop computer when trading. So how do I use it? Well, first things first, guys, I want you to know that I built this for myself originally, and I built this to get my time back. I was a guy that was going to school. I also had a bartending job, and here was the trouble. When I was going to school, had a bartending job, I was missing the setups. Why? Because I was busy, and by the time I got home, I missed all the setups in the world that I wanted. And I talked to Tyrone Foster, my original mentor originally, and I said, hey, how can we get these alerts to a cell phone? He said, I don't know. You have to be on the chart. And I said, is there a way to make an algorithm? Is there a way to make something that would alert me when this happens? And he said, I have no idea. And that's when the idea came. I went out and I found a group of developers that was able to take this entire strategy and put it into an algorithm that would alert my cell phone when this happened, saving me time and putting me in the right place at the right time to make some money. So I built this with one thing in mind. Can you guess what it is? Simplicity. I built it with simplicity in mind. I want this to be a simple PowerPoint. I want this to be a simple strategy. I want this to be a simple portfolio so that you guys can make and maximize your returns in the market. So first things first, let's take a look at this. As you can see, this is a blue arrow. This blue arrow stands for a buy in the market. Let's pretend right now that you have something at $100 and it goes up to $110. That $10, of course, as it goes up, when you buy it, you make money. And secondly, you're going to have a red arrow, which means sell. 
Now think about it this way. If something is at $100 and it drops to $90, when you sell something, AKA short the market, you make money when it drops. So on both sides, we could be either buying and making money when the market goes up or selling and making money when the market goes down. Today's goal is to learn how to use all four steps to utilize these arrows. So we have a simple four step process and it stands for this B C L S bigger cut location space, bigger cut location space. Now we're going to elaborate on these points, but before we do, I want to explain that we're going to be looking at the two candles to the left of the arrow. So what I want you to notice really quick as we go on our charts in a little bit is that instead of looking at the entire chart, we're only looking at two candles. We're only focused on two candles, getting away from all of this stuff that's in the market. So here are your chart sheets. First thing I want you to notice is that this is the sell side of the market, a sell alert called for the 15 minute, 30 minute or one hour time frame. Okay. The first question you want to ask yourself on these short term trades is, is it between two and 10 AM Eastern? If it's not, you don't take a trade. If it is, you can look to take the trade after you follow your four step process. So I'm not going to elaborate on this, but what I would like you guys to do is take a quick picture. Take a picture of this so that you can see exactly this when you want it. And we also have these available at your disposal inside of the DeLorean as well if you don't take a picture. Okay. Second, this is your buy alerts for the 15 minute, 30 minute and one hour. Notice the question again, is it between 2 and 10 AM Eastern? That again is very important. Again, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour only for the buy side. Now get a picture, get a picture. We'll learn how to use them in a minute. Here is also the four hour and daily. This is a buy alert. Now notice what we got rid of. The two to 10 AM Eastern is gone. So we got rid of this. Why? Because we don't care about the little market fluctuations when we're trading long term trades. And so we can trade this around the clock, 24 hours a day, five days a week when the market is open. So anytime you get a four hour or a daily alert in your DeLorean panel, you can take that trade following the four steps, of course. And finally, the sell side, same thing. Get rid of the, four, get rid of the two to 10 AM Eastern. It is 24 hours a day and you are following your four steps in order to actually know if you're going to take the trade. So you might be saying, how do I use these four steps? Well, that, that is what this training is totally about. We're going to talk about these four steps. Okay. So let's hit the charts. First things first, I just want to get you guys oriented with what this all looks like. So you can notice on the top left corner, this says 15 minute. Okay. Every single time you click any of these, the number is going to be there, whether it's 15 M 30 M one H four H or D. Those are the denominations of time that each one of these little candlesticks represent. And of course you need to use those to use your cheat sheet in order to follow the four steps. So this is what it looks like when it's zoomed out. Now let's zoom in really quick so we can actually pay attention to where the actual alert was called on the DeLorean trading software. Notice the little red arrow. When you see this red arrow, you need to go to the cheat sheet that is following that. So this is a red arrow, which means sell. And we saw that as a 15 M cheat sheet. So we need to go to our sell 15 M cheat sheet. Now we're on the right frame of mind. Now we just literally read step number one. Look at the two candles to the left of the arrow. Is the red candle bigger than the blue? So that's the first question. Now let's talk about a candle. A candle is these big, colorful, chunky things. Think about it this way. A candle has wax and it has a wick. The wax is the big, colorful, chunky thing and the little lines are the wicks. So the first question is, look at the two candles to the left of the arrow. Is the red candle bigger than the blue? And we're paying attention to the wax, not the wick, the candle body. So is the red candle bigger than the blue out of these two? Yes or no? Well, what do I notice? The top are the exact same. The bottom one, the red one goes lower, meaning the red one is bigger than the blue. And that was our goal. Is the red bigger than the blue? Yes or no? Yes, it is. So the moment we get a yes on step number one, we move to step number two and step number two says, does the red line cut through both candle bodies? Again, think wax. Does the red line cut through both candle bodies? So take a look. Does this red line cut through both candle bodies? Sure does cuts directly through both candle bodies. So we get another yes. That leads us to step number three. Is the gray 
aqua or blue line closely above the two candles, and I'm going to give you a bonus here, okay? Or cutting through them. So the question should read this in your notebook. Step number three, write this down. Is the gray, aqua, or blue line closely above the two candles or cutting through them? Meaning, is any of these lines closely above or cutting through? So let's take a look. Is the gray, aqua, or blue line closely above or cutting through? You tell me, yes or no? Well, take a look. The aqua is just cutting through the top. Obviously, it's closely above because it's cutting through. So the answer is yes. Again, our goal is to have one of those lines, either A, cutting through the two candles, or B, right above the two candles. Doesn't matter. Now we'll get into where above in a little bit, but for now, do we have the aqua cutting through or closely above? And our answer is yes. We have the aqua cutting through both. We get a yes, and that leads us to step number four. And step number four is a reassurance point. Step number four is not as yes or no-ish, but rather it's did we make sure? So let's look at this. Did you make sure the gray aqua or blue lines are not closely below? And what we're paying attention to in this question is the arrow. So here's your answer. Is the gray aqua or blue line closely below? We want to ask ourselves that. Okay. Notice the arrow is here. Is the gray aqua or blue really close below that arrow? No. Look at all the room we have from the arrow to the aqua, or I'm sorry, to the gray, that's my fault, to the gray. So we notice right here the red. We notice down here the gray. We have a ton of room. Room, write this down in your notebook, room equals good. <laughs> the room equals good. That is a good thing when you're looking for trades. And so the more room, the better. Now if there's none of them below you, that's even better. If there's none of them below you, that's even better. But in this case, you do have a lot of room. What you'll learn later, this is actually going to be where we're going to take profit. That's where we're targeting in terms of the trade. And right now we do have that room, so that is a good thing. That is good news for us as we speak. Okay? So let's now say, do we take this trade? Well, step number one was a yes. The red was bigger than the blue. Step number two was yes. The red line cut through both candle bodies. Step number three was yes in terms of the aqua cutting through both. And step number four was yes because we had room. So what do you guys think we do? We get four yeses, boom, you take the trade. Okay. Now, I don't expect you guys to get this right away, but let's keep going. And let's talk about a little bit more. First things first, guys, I want to make something clear. The three candle rule is important. Three COL, write this down. Three candles or less. You should be in profit in three candles. If not, you pull out. What does that mean? If you are not in profit after three candles, you exit the position, regardless of where it's at. Your goal with the DeLorean is to be in profit within three candles. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we are looking at these two candles in terms of the two candles to the left of the arrow, and the arrow is right here on candle number one, then what does that mean? Well, where the arrow is is candle number one every single time. And wherever the arrow is, you must enter. There's a big nugget. Wherever the arrow is, you must enter. If you do not enter on the same candle as the arrow, it is too late. So taking a look at this now, we have our first candle, our second candle, our third candle. If you are not in profit by the end of the third candle, you simply exit the position. So in this case, if you're selling up here, and by the end of the third candle, the market's down here, yes, you're in profit. But pretend you were selling up here, and at the end of the third candle, price was up here and you were a little bit negative. You exit the position. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means on different time frames, different spans of time. If you're looking at a 15-minute time frame, which was the example I just showed you, that means if you are not in profit within 45 minutes, you exit the position. Say you're trading a one-hour time frame from the DeLorean. That means that each hour represents one candle. And that means after three candles is three hours. Or say on a daily time frame. If we have a daily time frame, each candle represents a day in time. Which would mean, yes, if you are not in profit within three days, talk about patience, if you are not in profit within three days, you must exit the position. This is a key to your success inside of the DeLorean. So make sure you understand this and make sure you write this entire slideshow down. Now, as we look at this, I want to give you a nugget of the day, and we talk about the aqua line a lot in this training. Notice the aqua line here, it's way up here. 
Now the aqua line, you can write this down in your notebook if you wish, the aqua line is what I like to refer to as the magnet. The magnet is something that the market always comes back to. Think about a magnet in this way. What happens with a magnet? Well, a magnet, they come close enough together, boom, they hit each other. Two magnets. That's the nature of a magnet. Well, with price, as price gets away from the magnet, the magnetic pull, think about it as gravity, the magnetic pull pulls price back to it. The further away you are from the aqua, the less likelihood you have of a successful trade. Meaning if you are down here getting a sell arrow, a red arrow, and you're trying to do your four step process, and it's way, way, way down here away from the aqua, what does that mean for price? It has a high likelihood of wanting to pull back to the aqua. So if you're selling it down here, you have a lower probability that you're gonna end up in profit, a higher probability of loss. Do you think that's a good idea for anybody? No. So what I want you to understand is the closer you are up here, to the aqua when you're taking positions, the better. So make sure when you're looking at the aqua that you're close to it in proximity. The closer the better. If it's cutting through, that's the best. You want it to be cutting through if you can, but if it's closely above it, closely below it, depending on direction, you're good to go. So with that said, I want to do another example. Let's just keep doing this. Are we looking to buy or are we looking to sell? And for the sake of this example, we're on the 15 minute time frame. So are we looking to buy or are we looking to sell? Well, we have to find of course, the arrow. Take a look at this arrow. What's happening? Well, we have a blue arrow. Blue arrow means what? Buy. So we open our buy cheat sheet called on the 15 minute time frame. We simply do it again. This is now going to get repetitious on this training. Read step number one. Look at the two candles to the left of the arrow. Is the blue candle bigger than the red? Simple as that. So we look at the blue candle, okay? And we notice the blue arrow here, and we look at the blue candle here, there's candle number one, there's candle number two. These two are to the left of the arrow. Is the blue candle bigger than the red? Remember, think wax versus wick. So notice, right now, this is the wax. This is the wax. Answer me this, is the blue candle bigger than the red, yes or no? Yes, we get a yes. So that means we move on to step number two. On step number two, it says, does the red line cut through both candle bodies? So we simple, simply come back and we say to ourselves, does the red line cut through both candle bodies, if you're trying to remember this, or wax? Does the red line cut through both? Well, I know for a fact the red line cuts through the blue one, but take a look at the red here. Slow our roll for a minute, we begin a lot of yeses. What's happening with this red one? Notice how the red one cuts through the wick. We do not want a candle body cutting through a wick. It must cut through both can we, I'm sorry, we do not want an EMA, a red EMA, cutting through a wick. We want a red EMA cutting through a candle body. So in this case, what do you see? The red EMA, the red line, is cutting through the wick, not the body. So our answer in this case on step number two is no. Now if you get a no, what happens? Can you guess? You don't take the trade. You move on to the next alert in the alert panel of the DeLorean. You would stop. Now for the sake of this training, I'm going to go through a couple, uh, there's step three and step four, the other two steps. But with that said, if you are in the real world trading on your own and you get a no on any of these steps, you move on to the next alert. You ignore the rest. Now let's go to step three just for practice. Step number three says, is the gray, aqua, or blue closely below or cutting through? Read that again. Is the gray aqua or blue closely below the two candles or remember the bonus I gave you cutting through? Take a look at this. Look at the two candles. Is there a gray line, an aqua line, or a blue line closely below those two candles or cutting through those two candles? Yes or no? Well, there's nothing below us and there's certainly nothing cutting through us. In fact, all I see is those lines above us. There is another no. There's two reasons to not enter this trade now. Let's go to step number four. Did you make sure the gray, aqua, or blue lines are not closely above? Now this is your first example of how to measure what's closely above in terms of step number four. Let's look at this arrow and just create an invisible line to your right side. Notice about approximately the price it's at, 0 0.75130. Now look at the aqua, which is the line that is above you. Take a look at the aqua. Where's the aqua? It's at 0 0.75150. Okay, 
So 0 0.75150 is the top line in terms of the aqua, and 0 0.75130 is where the arrow is at. I want you to get rid of the last number, which is what? The zero. Now I want you to think of the next three. 515. I want you to get rid of the last number, 513. What is 515 minus 513? Two. What does that mean? That means that it is two pips room. And on step number four, you need a minimum of 10 pips room in order to take a position. Now the best thing about all of this is that DeLorean 2.0, which we recently re released, if you guys are brand new, you probably don't know that, does not call those anymore. So what I mean by that is step one and step two will now automatically pass inside of the DeLorean, meaning you really only have a two-step process, which is knowing step three and step four. So as we go along that, just remember that now more trades than ever are gonna look more like this, where yes, step one is already passed, yes, step two is already passed. All we have to do is look for step three and four. So let's take a good look at this, guys. First things first, are we looking to buy or are we looking to sell? That's the first question we must ask ourselves. And what do we notice? We'll start going a little bit faster as well. We notice blue arrow, blue arrow. Blue arrow means buy, so we need to go to our training guide, our four-step process. Look at the two candles to the left of the arrow. Is the blue candle bigger than the red? Okay, two candles to the left of the arrow. Remember candle bodies, AKA the wax, yes. The blue one is bigger than the red, so we get a yes on step number one. We go to step number two, it says, does the red line cut through both candle bodies? Yes, it does. The red line cuts through both candle bodies. So we get a yes on step number two. That leads us to step number three. Is the gray, aqua, or blue line closely below the two candles or cutting through? That's a big question. And remember, I told you guys this. What does the aqua act as? It acts as the magnet. Notice on this question, is the gray aqua or blue line closely below or cutting through? Only one of them. We don't care about the rest. We only need one of them. Now notice, the aqua cuts directly through both. That is a yes. So we get three yeses. We move to step four, and it says, did you make sure the gray aqua or blue lines are not closely above? Okay, how many pips room do we need from the arrow to the line above us? Bingo, 10. Remember, I just told you that a second ago. So we need to measure from this price, which is at 67.350, to the gray line above us, which is at approximately 67 point, let's say 470, it's in between these two. So what is 67.470 minus 67.350? Well, get rid of the last number on both. You're left with 747 and you have 735. 747 minus 735 equals 12. How many pips do you need? 10. So we have 12, that is a yes, we have enough room. We have enough room. So as we talk about this, remember that that is all about the take profit point. So what I wanna now talk about is where our stop loss is gonna be, where our take profit is going to be, how that is going to start to look. So when you get an arrow, traditionally speaking, the beginners are going to enter this trade directly where the arrow is at. But there is one colored line that I haven't mentioned yet. Can you guys guess what it is? It's the yellow line. I have never mentioned the yellow line. And here's your bonus. Because you have been to the training this long, this is your bonus. The yellow line is where you enter the position, not the arrow. So that means on the buy side, you wait for the market to pull back to the yellow line. That means on the sell side, you'd wait for the market to pull up to the yellow line. So in this case, instead of entering up here, at 67.350, you're entering five pips lower at 67.300. What does that mean? You're entering five pips lower, which means you are diminishing your risk and increasing your reward. So let's talk about how that looks like. If you were to get an arrow right here on this red candle on the sell side, instead of entering down here at the arrow, you would enter when the market pulls back to the yellow line and the red line. You would enter in this area right here specifically the yellow line. On the same side of the token, what we, just shot, what we just showed you a second ago with the buy side, you would enter in here, okay? This is what they call the Patrick push. No, I didn't name it after myself, but the students did, so now we name it that. This is what we call the Patrick push. Instead of entering right where the arrow and the algorithm tells us to enter, we wait for the pullback. It's an advanced entry. Now finally, our stop loss level is the spread times two, or an easy way to do it as well, is just two pips 
above or below the previous candles. So in this case, if we have a red arrow saying sell, we put our uh, stop loss level two pips above the two candles. And in this case, on a blue arrow for a buy, we put our stop loss two pips below the two candles. So our stop loss is down here or up here, meaning if we were to look at this, we would place our stop loss down here. Now, when we talk about this, you might ask yourself, in step number three, it says, is the gray aqua or blue line closely below or cutting through? And I realize in this example it's cutting through. But for a second, let's pretend that the aqua was down here. Let's pretend it wasn't cutting through. Would that be a yes on step number three? And here's the easiest way to decipher this. When you ask yourself where your stop loss is, it's two pips below these two candles. What you want to do is when you place it, you want to say, does the price, if it goes in the wrong direction, which in this case we're looking to buy, so of course looking to buy, that would mean what? Price going up. So in this case, if the price is going down, is it going to hit, in, in our hypothetical example with having the aqua way down here, is it going to hit the aqua or the stop loss first? If the answer is stop loss, you don't take the trade, it doesn't pass step three. If the answer is aqua or, or gray or blue or whatever line that is below you, if the answer is that, then yes, you take the trade. Meaning, if you are going to hit the stop loss before you hit the aqua, gray, or blue line, you don't take the trade on step number three. So this is how this looks in a visual example. Instead of entering at the blue arrow, you're going to enter on the pullback, right here. This is your entry point. Your stop loss goes two pips below the two candles, and your take profit level is up here. Now, a key tip to your success. You must always have risk of half of what your reward is. So if your risk is 10 pips, your reward must minimum be 20, a risk reward of a one to two. This is how you can get into a situation where you can lose more than you win and still make money. See, our goal of trading is not to be accurate 90% of the time. Our goal of trading is figure out how can we lose more than we win and still make money so that when we are accurate 60, 70, 80% of the time, we're making a ton of money. That is the key to success when trading. And so what this pullback method entry does is all it did is it moved our entry level to here, maximizing our profit potential, minimizing our risk potential. Finally, I give you guys a recommendation. 2% risk on every single trade, meaning you're only gonna risk 2% of your account balance on every single trade. And we'll talk about this in the boot camp that I have drawn out for you, five day boot camp, one hour each where we go more in depth. But I want you to make sure that you understand 2% risk every single trade. So let's talk about this again. Is this a buy or a sell? Now I wanna test yourself. Do we take this trade based off all four steps? Look at this right now. Do we take this trade based off all four steps? Okay, we have a sell arrow based off all four, not just one, but all four, do we take this trade? Well, let's take a look at it. Step number one says, look at the two candles to the left of the arrow, and keep in mind your answer right now as we're doing this. Look at the two candles to the left of the arrow. Is the red candle bigger than the blue? So, here's candle one, here's candle two. Is the red candle bigger than the blue? Yes or no? Well, yep, the red candle is bigger than the blue, so we move on to step two. Does the red line cut through both candle bodies? Take a look. Here's the two candles to the left of the arrow. Does the red line cut through both candle bodies? Yes or no? If you answered no, you're correct. The red line doesn't even touch the blue. Now remember, DeLorean 2.0 doesn't call that, but I want you guys to get in the habit of seeing that because even though DeLorean 2.0 shouldn't call that, doesn't mean it won't. We wanna make sure that you guys understand this more than the algorithm understands. That's how you're gonna be successful. The algorithm's not gonna take every trade correctly. It's your job to decipher if it's a good trade or not. So the answer is no on step two. I want you to also notice on step three, is the gray aqua blue line closely above or cutting through? Well, I want you to notice the two candles to the left of the arrow, nothing is cutting through. You notice what one is above, gray, that's the closest above. Where would your stop loss be? Here's the ticket. Your stop loss would be two pips above, it would be right here where my mouse is. So what would hit first if the market went in the wrong direction? The stop loss or the gray line? The answer is a stop loss. And again, on step number three, if your answer is stop loss, the answer is no. So step number three does not pass our protocol, does not pass, and we get a no, which means step two and three have now not passed. That leads us to step four. Did you make sure the gray aqua or blue lines are not closely below? 
So take a quick look. Right here is the arrow, and we take a look below us. Here's the blue line. The arrow is at 107.650. The blue line is at 107.600. Okay? Now you guys should be getting faster. Get rid of the zeros. You have 765 minus 760. What does that equal? That equals five pips. That means you get another no. You have three reasons to not enter. The red line on step number two doesn't pass through both. Step number three, the aqua and the gray are too far above. And step number four, the blue line is too closely below. So guys, within minutes, you are already identifying profitable setups. I want you to imagine practicing this for even one month. How would that impact your trading? Let me know how that would impact your trading. And I encourage you guys to now have a 90-day action plan. Practice, do homework, mark up charts. Take 90 days and take control of this because this information right here is going to help you take control of your entire future in trading. And I want you to succeed worse than anybody does. I want you to succeed in trading, I want you to succeed in DeLorean, and I want you to succeed overall. So with that said, I hope this was great information. I hope this was helpful information. And if you enjoyed this video, watch more. We have the bootcamp available for you. Have a good one.